with Carnarvon Castle, uh, which is looking a bit sad at the moment. Um, however, it's having lots of attention to uh, all sorts of parts. Um, it's sat on some temporary ambulance bogies at the moment because its uh, power bogies are in the workshop having a major overhaul. Um, they've uh, one of the gearboxes has had a, a big repair because there was a problem with it and the brake gear has been gone through and reworked the uh, it's having splash guards fitted over the top of the bogies to stop um, water and muck being thrown up to the underside of the loco um, so the bogies will be completely sorted out and the drive shafts from the Transmission down to the bogies, they're having some repair work. Uh, the engine itself is not bad, so we don't need to do a lot to that. Um, and the, similarly, the, uh, the transmission, which is this yellow bit here, that's, uh, that's okay in good working order. We don't need to do much to that. But the, um, the other area where we are doing a lot of work is on the the vacuum brake system. Uh, the loco is going to have a, a new drive for the vacuum brake exhauster which will run at a constant speed rather than relying on you revving the engine when you want to make more vacuum so it will be a, a better system. So all the old vacuum brake gear is has been stripped off and that's what these bits down here are. There's the twin vacuum brake exhausters that were driven by belts off the engine so they're being, going to be replaced with a hydraulic drive and it's going to have a new brake exhauster uh, of a type that was on a class 47 but we'll see those inside and the uh, the control system is being reworked as well we're going to improve the controls make them more reliable and the bodywork is also having a lot of intention i mean some of that's already been finished and painted um, so at the moment there's a lot of effort going into this loco even though the loco itself looks a bit sad just just as it is sat out here okay here we've got the two power bogies for Carnarvon Castle um, they have done quite a lot of work on them uh, they've got new air brake cylinders with a, an inbuilt spring parking brake in them um, we've got uh, all these splash guards which will stop muck being chucked up onto the bottom of the loco over the wheels. Um, I say they've been gone through mechanically so they'll be in good order for many years to come hopefully. This is a uh, X-Class 47 loco brake exhauster. Here's the um, the bonnets for the Carnarvon Castle that we were talking about earlier um, they've been had some minor repairs done and been repainted um, this uh, this bodywork is fairly unique in that it's glass fibre which is unusual for a, a diesel loco and in fact when when these funky locos were built for consolidated diamond mines in Namibia in 1967 they were the world's first glass fiber bodied diesel locomotives so there's a fairly obscure record there for them anyway as you can see they're now in green with yellow stripes and looking rather smart As you can see, Merlin Emrys um, is uh, having a bit of a repair. We had a minor boiler problem, so we've had to strip the cab sides off this side, um, and uh, Bob, our coded welder, is uh, welding up an area. Um, but hopefully, uh, that'll be will be done by the end of today or tomorrow when uh, the loco can be uh, put back together and it will be 
back in service. So just a, a minor job, thankfully. Right, here we've got Welsh Pony, which might not on the surface look much different than last time we looked at it. Um, however, there's a lot been going on and there's a lot going on at the moment on it. The uh, these side frames are now pretty much properly fitted um, with new spacer blocks on one side and an old spacer block on the other side, which set up the size and uh, of the engine. Um, the volunteer gang have been working on this part of it and they've done done an excellent job on that. We've got uh, some stretchers fitted as well which tie the inner frames to the outer frames. Um, so all that framework around the loco has been done and they've also started to put some lagging and cladding on the boiler. Yeah, so there was a there was a lot of pro problems with these outer frames. There was some distortion caused by, well, who knows what in the past. Um, uh, and these these frames were not sitting square at all and not straight. And uh, so anyway, the, that is what the uh, the gang have been working at. And uh, say so now with these spaces in and the the frames straight and true um, that's a good basis for uh, finishing off the the assembly of the loco um, the cab now will sit square and the tank and everything um, and the smoke box when that when that gets done so that's a good good bit of progress there the um, the other bits you can see is that we've got some original uh, boiler clack valves have been fitted to the f lower firebox sides. Um, if I come around this side, this this is a clack valve. What happens is that the uh, the water from the injector feeds will come in a pipe in in here, and as it's been for it been forced up, and it pushes up the clack valve which is a, effectively a non-return valve and then into the into the boiler there um, so when the injectors turned off that clack valve drops back on its seat and prevents steam and water being driven back out of the injector pipework so these are original parts that we've found and uh, they're going back on there's one one on each side of the loco on the boiler there's there's various fittings um, this valve here um, was added in the 1890s to the original boiler. It's for the vacuum brake. It's an extra takeoff to supply the, the vacuum brake ejector. Um, and uh, I think all the England engines were modified at that time. They had this extra pad put on the boiler and this takeoff valve fitted. And this is, uh, again, another original part that we've um, restored and refitted onto the new boiler. The uh, salter safety valve is to an original pattern sat on top of this. Originally, the, the locos only had one safety valve. Um, well. As a, uh, an extra safety feature, we've added a modern safety valve on top of the dome which will be hidden from normal view, but it provides two safety valves on the boiler, which is uh, considered much better practice than just relying on the one. So we've got, um, as you see, at the moment, there's no side rods on the loco, no coupling rod or connecting rod. Um, that's because we're making new ones. They're in the machine shop at the moment. Um, and the Rods themselves have been fabricated and heat treated uh, and now they're in machining, um, which is a fairly big job, but uh, um, it's most of the way through now. Um, and the other parts that go with it are the, are the brasses. They're, they're the, um, the ends that sit in the rods and actually form the bearings around the, 
around the crank pins here and here. Right, in the machine shop, which is where we are, we've got uh, one of the Walsh Pony rods. This is a, a connecting rod. And you can see the far end just has a, a small eye which will have a whole board in it and that will uh, have a pin through and that will sit in the crosshead so we do the driving. Now this end we've got the uh, eye and you can see the inside of it's been machined out to take a, a rod brass and uh, there's one of the there's one of the old ones and there's some material here that's been cut and roughed out ready to make the new brasses you can see they're marked up which which bits they make these are all ex-south african railways wheel sets that came in bogies uh, we've either bought bogies separately from south africa or some of them have come out from under wagons but at the moment there's a lot of wheel set work going on and that's to do with swapping wheel sets around to release the one the steel wheel type that we use under the carriages under the carriage bogies because we've got uh, new carriage bogies to put together for the uh, 2152 observation car and the new standard saloon we're building um, you can see the the pair at the end they're steel ones and they've been reprofiled they're all nice and shiny they've been in the wheel lathe and uh, they're now to profile um, the other ones the ones with the spokes in the back here is a uh, they're chilled iron wheels and they're much harder to reprofile um, so we only reprofile them if we really need to um, but what we do with the chilled iron ones, they will get moved into wagon bogies where they do a much lower mileage um, and they'll be fine there. Uh, and we take the steel ones from the wagons and use them and use them under the carriages. So, uh, let's say, as we've got um, bogies to do for these two Welsh Island carriages coming up. Uh, we're taking the opportunity to swap a load of wheel sets around and the other work that's been done on these is that uh, the wheels have been shifted on the axles very slightly each side all these wheels wheel sets have been in the wheel press and they've been moved just one eighth of an inch in each side which matches the Festinioga Welsh Island track rather than the South African tra track gauge. It's uh, a very small change but it just helps with the running and the longevity of the wheel sets and the rails. Here we have the front water tank and the bunker for Garrett number 87. Um, the rest of the loco is up at the works at Dinas. Uh, the boiler has come back from Israel Newtons in Cromford where it's had a 10 year exam and some repairs so the rest of the locos are going back together at Dinas but the the tank and bunker and the cab are here at Boston Lodge to be painted basically because we've got the proper paint shop space and uh, people to do that down here whereas at Dinas there isn't really the proper painting facility so as you can see the uh, the bunker and the tank and the dome which is in between them is they've all been finished um, in basically the original South African livery uh, with the SAR SAS emblems on the side and they look rather shiny and good and uh, Hey, we're hoping to have that loco back together uh, well as soon as we can because we could do with a, another garret available for traffic um, although there's still a fair bit of assembly work to do it's surprising how these um, the amount of work um, 
in, in just putting one of them back together is uh, quite a, well, they're large locos, they're the biggest two foot gauge steam locos built and uh, there's a lot of bits to go back together basically. <laughs> Here's the cab for 87. Um, it's, in, it's been shot blasted to clean up, get rid of all the old paint, and it's had some repair work. Um, it's also had some slight modification because we've changed the brake arrangement on 87. Um, we've got uh, the handbrake and the vacuum brake, is as the later engines. And that means the back of the cab can be reworked because the handbrake's in a, a different position. And we've added this bulge to the side of the cab. And that allows the, you to operate the handbrake handle inside. So, say the whole thing's now been shot blasted and cleaned up and painting has started. You can see the cream inside and obviously the the outside will have some coats of nice shiny black to match the rest of the engine. Right, so the lid has had the superheater repairs completed um, and uh, it's back available in traffic at the moment. Uh, it's been out recently pulling, pulling trains. Um, although now we're actually thinking of, uh, because the uh, ten-year boiler exam is coming up reasonably soon. We've been thinking about that um, and uh, we'll probably be starting that this coming winter. Uh, the boiler will have to come out of the frames and be stripped down for a, an exam. So we've been thinking about once the boiler's out there's various improvements that we've got. Um, we've been planning to do on it and make the ash pan uh, a bit better because the original, the, what well, the S pan it's got was original, originally designed with dual firing in mind, oil and coal, um, which compromises it slightly. So we've been uh, planning some modifications there, and there'll be the usual mechanical work that can be done once the boiler's out of the frames as well. So that will probably be, say, starting at the end of this year. The Lilla group have been busy uh, with some help uh, putting the loco back together again. As you see, it was, um, it's been all stripped down for a 10-year boiler exam, which was fine. It had a hydraulic test. Um, now, basically, all the loco has been reassembled. All the fittings are back on the boiler. Um, as you can see, the tank and cab are on. Um, there's some work still going on. Um, the, uh, the injectors are missing at the moment. Um, that's because uh, we're actually machining some, some new ones because the, uh, the old ones were in rather poor, although they did work. They tended to be a little bit unreliable and difficult to, uh, to operate um, because they're very old Hunslet ones. Hunslet and Gresham and Craven, but they were quite troublesome. So we were able to get the original drawings um, and uh, had a pattern made. So those injectors will be going on when they're finished and the loco will be available again. I mean, in the meantime, if loco is needed sooner, it'll probably go go back together with the original injectors. This is the uh, underframe and body frame for the next Welsh Island standard saloon carriage, um, which you can see is pretty well advanced. There's more bits to go on the ends, but um, the mid frame is done. You can see the brake gear over there, the vacuum, vacuum brake cylinder. Uh, originally a South African Railways one and a vacuum brake reservoir. It's an uh, ordinary carbon steel underframe. It's a box section which we welded together here and the upper frame is a stainless steel box section. The, the reason we use stainless steel in the upper frame is um, basically for corrosion resistance. 
We could use ordinary carbon steel, but uh, we would need to spend quite a long time uh, protecting it, um, uh, which could be painting or galvanising or some process like that. But actually, we've found it's uh, it's better to use a, a stainless steel upper frame. And then that's, say, welded to this mild steel, carbon steel underframe, which is much less prone to corrosion. Um, and it's easier to work with uh, and do the welding on the, on the carbon steel. So we stick with that for the underframe and just use the stainless for the upper frame. Uh, this is now quite well advanced in the week or so this frame should be finished and then it'll be put down onto some temporary ambulance bogies to go into the carriage works for all the timber and fitting out to be to be done in there. Here we've got the uh, the start of the James Spooner. Um, we've got the new uh, boiler cradle frame uh, sat on its power bogies. The the work that's going on at the moment is uh, on the reversing gear for the loco. So I'm on the driver's side. This is this is the reverser. So to control the direction of the engine, and this is the reverser that the driver uses. Um, you've got notches for using the steam more expansively or not. And right down here or here for starting and then the driver it's all notching up moves up as the speed increases anyway this this gear controls the valve gear on the on the engines and so motion from here has got to be transferred so there's a there'll be a, a rod coming out either side uh, and that will disappear if we look at this end it will disappear behind the tank um, to this shaft. This is uh, called an intermediate way shaft. So there'll be this arm will in, end up being welded on here to this taper lock bush, which will hold, basically connect the arm to the shaft. So the the moving motion off the reverser will come to a rotary motion on this this way shaft. These are modern plumber, plumber block bearings that we've set the shaft in. The originals would have been similar, but less sophisticated. These are modern equivalents. They're off the shelf, reliable, and relatively inexpensive. Um, and of course you can't see them, so uh, it doesn't affect the appearance of the engine, but they'll work rather well we hope uh, we've already got them these on on the other double engines and they've proved successful so anyway this rotary motion from the reverser um, will be taken to the valve gear and we've got what's called the bridle rod will do that um, so in the center here uh, there's another arm to be welded on and then the bridle rod um, will go backwards and forwards as controlled by the driver and down in the middle there that's where it will be attached to the link motion to control the valve events on the engine. So as you can imagine because this bogey moves as the loco goes on the, along the track um, these joints have got to be able to articulate uh, and move so there's a swivel joint here and down there as well on the bridle rod when it's finished. But obviously now is a good time to do all this reversing gear work whilst the cradle is bare and before we've got the cab and tanks and well and, and the boiler in. So that's the bit we're working on at the moment. Um, and uh, in fact once this is done then we move to doing the handbrake gear, which will run across the loco in, in the middle here. And that's 
once that's in, uh, hopefully the boiler will be with us and cooked together. So we'll then be able to put the boiler in the in the cradle, which is the next sort of really big step.